Welcome to StockInvest.us podcast. We remind you that trading involves a high risk of losing money, and that you should speak with a financial advisor before buying or selling any securities. You should not base your investment decision upon StockInvest.us. By using the information provided you agree and are held liable for your own investment decisions. Hi and welcome to StockInvest.us podcast for week 23. In this podcast, I will tell you a little bit about what I think about Bitcoin, Dogcoin, a little touch within uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon. Uh, By the end of the podcast, you will hear about my portfolio, how it's doing. It was a good week last week, as expected. Uh, But very first, we will start looking at the market and what we can expect for the week ahead of us. Last week, I told you that the very best scenario would be a horizontal week with few uh, movements at all my gut feeling told me that it would be a red week uh, and again i was wrong it went horizontal the nasdaq was barely up half percent last week for 047 to be exact dow jones ended the week at uh, 34756 up 066 so just about a half percent for dow jones as well Dow Jones has been doing good over many, many weeks. Nasdaq has been a little bit up and down, but for the last two weeks, actually last three weeks, Nasdaq is slightly up, which is good. But again, Nasdaq is getting close to this 14,000 level. I've been speaking about it in all my podcasts lately that it needs to break this 14,000. And I believe that if we do, uh, and if we do it on proper volume, uh, we will see a final rally. I also told you that uh, every time it try and doesn't make it, makes uh, the chance for a, a fall higher. So we are, again, we are very close to 14,000. It's just a few hundred points and we will be at 14,000. So this week will be one of these weeks where we will know a lot of answers. Dow Jones, uh, very close to the 35,000 limit. It's only 500 points left for uh, Dow Jones to hit 35,000. So also for Dow Jones, it will be an interesting week. The difference between Nasdaq and Dow Jones is that Nasdaq contains most of the tech stocks, while Dow is a little bit more industrial stocks. What happened last week uh, and what will happen this week? Well, one of the things that you have to pay attention to this week is the upcoming consumer price index numbers. They will be released on Thursday. And if this doesn't meet the expectations, Oh, that can cause a lot of harm. We know that the prices will rise. We see it uh, all over. For for a few weeks, I told you about lumber prices. Uh, For sure, if you live in the United States, you know all about the gas prices. Uh, Everything's been uh, slightly increasing. We know that it is hard to get uh, labor because uh, the benefits are so good that many rather stay home instead of taking minimum wage. So we know that prices are being pushed everywhere but how much are they actually being pushed Uh, on thursday you will get the first idea of what kind of direction there are some expectations Uh, over the month the economists expect 0.4 percent increase it was actually up uh, 0.8 percent in april and uh, normally by a year you expect something like two percent but this year uh, you actually expect for uh, almost 5%, uh, which is as high as it was in 2008, actually. That's the expectations for the year. So if a Thursday's number come in very bad, let's say they go uh, like they did in May, uh, sorry, in April, up to uh, 0.8%, well, then I am pretty sure that we will have a rough, rough week. So what will happen uh, during the week, uh, waiting for these numbers? It's a bit hard to say. Last week, I told you to keep an eye on the unemployment rate. It was expected to come in around 5.9% in total, ended at 5.8%, so it was a good number. 
The treasury yield that I, which I keep mentioning, which is the expectation of interest, is uh, still very low. 156 actually down uh, uh, a little bit uh, since last week, a few points uh, less than last week. So the market doesn't seem to expect too high um, inflation rate if they will come in above expectation. Again, I said for the last time, there will be a heavy fall uh, on Thursday and Friday. If they come in uh, within expectation, maybe even better than expectation, I think that's the one thing that can break us really above 14,000. But as we will see when we go through the uh, main stocks, uh, there are some uh, things that what is uh, make me believe that overall we will see uh, a horizontal or a weak week. But let's uh, look at a few other things. As I said, good expectations to oil. Uh, oil is almost at $70 right now. It's traded at $69. So oil is going up. And for those who follow me, uh, know that uh, I are in oil stocks. I love oil stocks. I've been uh, repeating this uh, in all my podcasts, and oil is just pushing upwards, and the oil stocks are doing the same, just going up, up, up. And I think that oil will hold good if markets take a nosedive. If they go down, I think oil stocks will do relatively good. They will have their fall, but maybe not as much as the most exposed tech stocks, biotech stocks, etc. So uh, I really like uh, oil. I don't see, given the current world situation, I don't see uh, oil prices changing uh, very fast right now. But you never know. Uh, the one expectation I have is that some sort of conflict will come and that we, during this year we'll see a peak of $100. So far, the direction being correct. Uh, it's uh, moving upwards. Now it's a little bit higher than I thought it would be in average, uh, but in general. Gold, the other thing that you want to keep an eye on because gold is a kind of safe uh, investment. Most banks still hold gold uh, gold reserves. Uh, so it's still the one thing that people tend to move towards if they want to feel a little safe. Gold been on the rise for a long time. I'm saying that it will go upwards to uh, $2,000 and it's really heading in that direction. It's not much uh, left before... Uh, Gold will be at uh, 2000 just $105 about, and we will be there. Last week, gold actually fell a little bit, down $15 from the week uh, before. Nothing major. I think it's uh, related to the unemployment numbers coming in by expectation. You know, uh, if you remember back to, to last month, uh, we were a little bit shocked about uh, the unemployment rate rate that pushed the gold up and the stocks down so uh, the uh, the expectations for this week well well one of the things that we can do is we can look about uh, on the buy and sell signals across the world that will give us a slight uh, indication and we usually do that in my podcast i refer to our signals at stockinvest.us we analyze more than 32 i think it's almost 34,000 tickers right now across the world we give them a buy, hold, sell the evaluation, and this can give us an idea if the market is too uh, hot or too cold. We call it overvalued or undervalued. And right now, uh, all tickers across the world that we analyze is giving thirty-six uh, percent is giving a buy signal. That is not uh, much, as you can uh, figure out. It's about one third. Uh, but last time we were hitting close to the 40 limit, we got a correction. So we are getting close to where it starts to become very high. If you look at Nasdaq, we can see that Nasdaq is uh, at 34, not particularly hard uh, high. Last time Nasdaq really took a nice uh, dove some months back, it was all the way up at 47, 48, so it's nothing special. But if we go to New York Stock Exchange, we can see that it's 48. The New York Stock Exchange has been high, it's been close to 50. Uh, for a few weeks now, indicating that uh, it's getting close to somewhere where we can expect a correction. Even London is getting uh, a little bit high, up, up in the 40s. Frankfurt uh, at 36. Last time uh, Frankfurt and uh, London was up in the close to the 40s or above 40s, we got the correction after a few weeks. 
Tokyo uh, is uh, high. It's uh, 31. It's been down at 20, 27, 24 for a few weeks now. Getting up to 31. So it's been a good week in Tokyo last week. Shenzhen is uh, as high as uh, we have measured all this year. It's at 37. It's uh, when we started back in January, the session was all the way down, uh, only having like 10, 11 uh, percent uh, buy signals. Slowly we're up to 16, 17, uh, then up to the 20s, but as high as 37, we haven't seen uh, as long as I've been mentioning these numbers in the podcast. So I expect that uh, we will see some changes. These numbers are not like very, very high. They are getting high. Uh, I spoke about 14,000 limit for uh, Nasdaq that we can get into a rally. And usually when things get into overbought, they can go very far, very high. If you remember last uh, week, listen to my podcast last week, I told you that uh, AMC, you should just run the, enjoy the run as long as it lasts, but keep your stop loss tight because when it falls, it will fall hard. It's so typical for anything that goes into overbought uh, that they can move very fast, very hard, but also do the opposite, fall very fast, very hard. We are not yet there. Uh, when it comes to the stock markets as such, they are not really all bought, but some stocks uh, are. So uh, given uh, all this, if we manage to push through 14,000, we can get into this overbought, this rally, which I've been talking about for a few weeks. But let's uh, dive uh, into the stock analysis. We look at uh, some of the major stocks doing so uh, using technical analysis. We can tell a little bit more about the market and what we expect. And one of these stocks which we follow is, of course, Apple being the major tech stock of all tech stocks. Last week, I told you that I believe um, Apple would uh, end at $120. I kept uh, a low target for Apple. Apple came in uh, by Friday at 125.9, doing me a little bit better than uh, expected. If we look at the Apple chart, uh, we can see that uh, it has a buy signal from the short-term moving average, has a sell signal from the long-term moving average, uh, has a sell signal from the combination between these two averages, all of them indicating that the stock should continue downwards. However, it is uh, bouncing up from the bottom of the trend. Usually this is a good sign, that's where you want to place your bets. Uh, because most in most cases, the stock will move within the trend. That's the main rule. Let the trend be your friend. The stock will move within the bottom and the top, and whenever it gets to the top, you would uh, sell, and you will rebuy when it gets to the bottom. It's usually a good position. The one thing that worries me, and I've been saying the same thing for a few weeks, is the less volume. There is less and less volume uh, in Apple, so there is less and less attention to the stock as such. Uh, and you really need uh, volume to push high. Above, uh, Apple has resistance at 128, 130, 132, 134. Nothing really major will happen until it breaks 135. Above this, it can go very fast wherever it wants because that is also all-time high. On the dome, it will find uh, support at 124, 122, and 120. If it falls below 120, it should fall very fast downwards to 115 and later 110. As we can see from the chart, you can do this yourself. Go to stockinvest.us, type in the ticker Apple AAA. PL or right Apple, uh, you will see that, uh, as I said, it's bouncing up from the bottom of the trend. And normally this is a good buying opportunity. The volume is uh, not there. The support is there. Uh, not too much resistance above. All of these things indicate that it should be able to push upwards. Looking at the relative strength index is 45, neither high, uh, neither low. It's in the middle of the curve, but it's moving uh, downwards. From my experience, uh, looking at the very last part of the trend, it is moving within a triangle formation. 
between 127 and 128. If it managed to break uh, 128, it should uh, push upwards, otherwise it will continue downwards. For the week as such, uh, I expect that the stock will uh, try, maybe already tomorrow, will try to uh, push um, upwards. Uh, could be 128, but that it will not manage to push all the way through. All in all, I expect uh, yet another slow week for Apple. Nothing special, a little bit up, a little bit down. I expect Apple to end the week at $123. So I don't want to place my bets uh, on Apple as is, even though it's in the bottom of the trend. And the main reason, again, is the lack of volume. If I see volume uh, come back into the market, back into the stocks that are pushing towards this 14,000 level and above, and it has to be breaking this 14,000 with uh, some good volume. Uh, and not only 14,000 at one point, it really has to break it by 14,000 to 300. Uh, then you should just buy Apple for whatever you can because it should probably then just push at least up to 150. But we are not there yet. And I expect a slow week from Apple. The next stock um, that we look into is uh, Microsoft. Last week I told you that I believe Microsoft would end at $245. Microsoft ended just above $250, so I was $5 off target. Looking at Microsoft, we can tell that Microsoft has a buy signal from the short-term moving average, just giving a buy signal also from the long-term moving average, but having a sell signals from the relation between these two averages often referred to as crosses. Don't confuse it with Golden Star. Golden Star is something totally different. Uh, that is an invention made by me actually and it has to do with the same thing, the sh how the short and long term moving average cross crosses each other, but it has to do it in within the price line. Uh, I think it was back in 2007 when I first uh, started uh, using the Golden Cross. And uh, while speaking about Golden Cross, well, Microsoft have uh, had a few Golden Crosses this uh, year. Last time was just by the end of uh, March, when uh, uh, Microsoft were at $235 and it moved straight up to $261. When there is not a crossing in the price line, we have uh, crosses what we call golden crosses. And if you follow the mark and you follow experts, they often say that uh, the, if you use the 100 and 200 uh, moving averages, you get these major crosses telling where the market should head. But right now, uh, using seven days and 35 days, we can say that there is a sell signal in Microsoft. If the short term goes over the long term, we will get into a buy signal, but we are not there yet. Right now, Microsoft is pushing upwards. Uh, the volume is following the stock. Not nicely, I would say. It's uh, last part is correct, but before that, it was a few times with divergence, meaning that the volume is going the opposite direction of the price, which is not what you want. Microsoft is pushing upwards, but is now hitting the resistance just above $250. Will it be able to break it? Looking at the volume, we can tell that also Microsoft is losing momentum overall. But like Apple, it is within a rising trend. It is at uh, what I would call close to the bottom of the trend. So it's usually a place where you want to put your bets. We have to decide how will it go this week. Uh, technically, it's a good position. Nothing scary uh, at all. Uh, except the f fact that there is not too much support below. If the market turns red, the, it, the stock will find some support at 245, later at 243, then 240, 235, and 230. If it breaks below 230, it should fall very fast, but there is nothing in the chart indicating that that will happen this week. Looking at the week as such, uh, I believe that the stock should manage to push upwards, push upwards to this uh, resistance around 255, then turn downwards again. Question is, uh, how far uh, down will it go? Uh, how will it end by the week? Originally, I was uh, looking at uh, 240. The reason for this is that I expect uh, fundamental 
news can change the picture totally. And then I speak about the consumer price index coming in higher than expected. But pure technically, uh, everything is looking uh, okay. It indicates to me that there will be a horizontal movement between 243 and 255 uh, over the week as such. But I'll have to put a target because you will measure my uh, expertise by how I evaluate the stock. So I will actually be uh, a little bit negative and believe that we will see some uh, major market falls by the end of the week pushing also microsoft down and that we will end around 240 dollars by the end of the week if that happens we will have a little bit change in microsoft as such the next uh, stock we will look into is um, amazon um, correction we'll look at tesla first then we'll look at amazon and uh, Tesla is so hard to really give a good idea because it's a volatile stock and it uh, moves so much on the news from Elon Musk. But he's been quiet about Tesla for uh, some times now. What I read in the news is that Tesla have uh, increased the prices on the cars. Uh, many do simply because it's a short uh, chip shortage around the world. The the raw materials in, is increasing, the metal price is increasing. In general, we see increase in prices across the world. Even food is going up. And this causes uh, Tesla to also increase the price. Last week, I told you, I believe uh, Tesla is pushing upwards to 660. It was really moving in the right direction. I think it was as high as 640, maybe 645 intraday uh, last week but didn't manage and then fell uh, back uh, fell below the support at 600 all the way down to 575 and is now pushing upwards uh, again but looking at the chart we can say that uh, tesla have a little bit uh, better there is no uh, the volume is following the stock a little bit better but it's not enough uh, to really hit that uh, old good tesla where it moved to $300 instantly. There is nothing in the chart indicating that we will have any really, really fast movements, but it's bouncing up from the support at 560. And again, pushing upwards as a sell signal from the short term moving average to long term moving average. There is a slight divergence in the volume, not much, uh, but a little. The trend is uh, slightly downwards. And in the, for the long, long picture, uh, there is no doubt in the, my mind that Tesla will push uh, downwards. Uh, and uh, looking far ahead, I am also very certain that we will see Tesla somewhere, for sure, somewhere close to the 400 level. But in the short term to medium term picture, I still believe that Tesla will push upwards towards uh, the top of the trend. As I said last week, I don't believe we will see Tesla up to 900 anytime soon, but that we should be able to see Tesla upwards to the 660, 680 level. So I will uh, keep uh, the same target this week. Uh, I don't expect very much movements, but I think that the Tesla, as we can see in NIO and a few other of these cars, that they will have a good week uh, for the week ahead of us. So I remain uh, positive to Tesla in the short term that it should push uh, upwards to the 660 level. So I'll keep uh, I'll keep that same target, seeing Tesla move upwards. Then it's uh, Amazon. Last week I said I believe Amazon would end at 3,150. Well, it did 50 dollars better and did 3,206, 56 dollars. To be correct above my target not very much considered the price and uh, for uh, amazon uh, we can see that there is a sell signal from the short term moving average a sell signal from the long term moving average looks a little bit like uh, apple in a good uh, trend wide but still upwards but it has uh, it is at the very bottom of the trend over algorithms at stock invest uh, which is uh, 
purely based on signals, indicators, or lots of signals and indicators, is uh, ranking uh, Amazon as a sell candidate. Not much, uh, minus 1.35 uh, is the score to be exact. So it's almost hold. Uh, what the system doesn't like is the low volume, uh, which I neither like. It is somewhat okay since the stock is moving sideways. It's been moving sideways between 3,150 and 3,300 for the last uh, better part of uh, five weeks right now. If it falls down uh, below 3,150, you should expect uh, to see Amazon down to 3,000 very soon. And the uh, resistance just above today's level at 3,250, 3,300, 3,350, all the way up to 3,500 uh, makes me believe that we will not see uh, Amazon moving fast upwards. Then it has to be something very, very special moving the stock. And uh, you never know about stocks, that's why you uh, f have to keep an eye on the market as well, because fundamental news changes uh, the picture entirely. We know all that when the COVID hit, uh, we know that when the financial crisis hit, uh, some news can push it, could be uh, uh, anything from increasing interest rates to bad consumer price index numbers. These numbers may shift the picture totally. Using technical analysis just gives, a, gives us a general ID. And that ID is that uh, Amazon uh, will struggle this week. I don't manage to see it go very far up. Uh, at the same time, I don't see it uh, manage to fall very hard. I believe it will move somewhere between 3,100 and 3,300 for the week as such. And uh, that makes me believe that if we put the target at 3,150, keeping the same target as last week, we should not be far off. And that brings me to uh, crypto. And uh, crypto you hate and you love. Uh, many people have been losing uh, money right now. We can see a lot of these influencers giving such good advices at TikTok promising uh, Ethereum to 5,000 and uh, XRP to $5, there is no, uh, no limit. What you have to remember is that usually, usually they want you to sign up for some affiliate uh, link below their TikTok. I am no expert at uh, crypto, but I'm fairly good at technical analysis and I've been trading for many years. That doesn't make me an expert at all. Uh, but I tend to be correct. And uh, I've been saying uh, that the crypto market will move downwards. I was very positive when the most were negative, saying that it should push upwards to 70,000. We never reached 70,000. We need to reach 66,000 before the fall start. And I told you that it would uh, go down. Uh, I was uh, wrong last week. I said that I thought it would fall all the way to 27. Thousand, but on Friday it ended at thirty-six thousand. Right now it's uh, trending towards thirty-four thousand, and everything is starting to be red again. So where is uh, Bitcoin uh, trading? I told you last week that by the end of the week might be a good buying opportunity. The question is, if we look at the chart, have the, have the crypto moved uh, the way we want? Uh, has it managed to establish? Like last week, uh, we can see that below 35,000, Bitcoin have hardly any support. It was not much traded between uh, 20 and 35 because it moved straight up, uh, more or less. That means that if it falls below 35, you can get this panic where it goes really deep. And I've been expecting that panic. It didn't happen last week. Instead, Bitcoin moved totally sideways between 35, 40,000. It was up at the 40. I promised you 40. It got up to the 40s, uh, but uh, didn't manage. As I neither expected, didn't manage to break up uh, to 45,000. Again, testing the 35,000 limit since the movement last week was not as I expected because if crypto had uh, or bitcoin had fallen more last week i think that we would see a obvious buying opportunity usually we can see this uh, in how the volume changes that it falls and at the very end of the fall you get this high volume 
that was the uh, obvious uh, last time uh, when it uh, was on the downturn i told you that the volume is going in the opposite direction of the price and that you did this is a signal that things will go very bad having a sell signal from the short term moving average sell signal from the long term moving average and volume is extremely low compared to previous and that just indicates that most people are waiting further direction relative strength index is 46 is not very high last time it was uh, 86 we had the reaction down from the 60s uh, last time it was very low 14 16 uh, when it was oversold, it neither reacted very well uh, upwards. So uh, what will happen? Well, with all this resistance now building up from 35 all the way up to 50,000 and later that huge, huge resistance at 50 to 60,000 makes me believe that I have to change my opinion that uh, this uh, end of this week uh, would give a buying opportunity, meaning last week, week 22. Uh, giving a buying opportunity, I think that we will have to wait one more week, meaning that we'll have to wait the, the following week and that crypto will continue downwards and especially Bitcoin. Trying to read the chart, trying to find exactly where it uh, will end, where it will be is uh, hard. You can try for yourself. See if you do uh, better. It is much a guessing game. So qualified guessing game, you might say, but all this resistance above, I think that the very best you can hope for is to see Bitcoin touching 40,000, uh, but that we will see a deeper downside. Again, uh, things may change the picture totally. If the markets go into super green, let's say that the consumer price index will be very low, pushing uh, stock markets into a frenzy, pushing Nasdaq above 14,000, that will pull uh, also Bitcoin upwards. If uh, we see the opposite, that uh, Nostalgia don't manage to really follow up, that the consumer price index is maybe higher or just on target, and market go down, that will also put a toll on Bitcoin. I believe uh, that uh, with the interest that uh, still is in uh, crypto, we will see these buys every time it falls $5,000, we will see these support buys. So when it falls below 30, it should go, uh, sorry, 35,000, it should fall to 30,000, then we will see a pickup up to 35, and then it will push downwards to 30,000 again, and we will see a new pickup at 25, pushing upwards to 30, maybe 35,000, and then a new fall. We will have that typical uh, ladder uh, kind of progress. So I believe, looking at this, trying to make a qualified guess, I believe still that we need to see Bitcoin head downwards to 20, some low 20,000 before we really get a good buying signal indicating that we will get back on track again. So last week I had a target of 27,000 for Bitcoin. Well, this week I will give a target of 25,000, meaning that we should go even further down. Uh, if it gets that low, I will repeat myself, it will be a buying opportunity. And I see this correction as natural. I know it hurts if you bought at $50,000, $60,000 and you see that uh, Bitcoin is uh, more or less half already. Uh, but look at the long picture. Look at how fast Bitcoin been going up. These kind of uh, reactions is totally natural. I don't find it very, very scary. Of course, uh, it is pain if you are in loss, but many are still in super profit in uh, Bitcoin. Just check the uh, just check the influencers, just check TikTok or whatever you are following. They are posting pictures of uh, cash and dineros, uh, telling how they was on the big upturn. At some point, they might consider to uh, reduce uh, the risk, their exposure, and that can push uh, even further down. If you're very, very deep into Bitcoin, you might want to follow the so-called whales, the big, big crypto wallets and see how they are doing. I know they've been uh, buying a little bit at the low 30s, uh, but we will see. Maybe they will uh, buy more 
or maybe they will still push crypto further down. But we will not dwell more with the Bitcoin. As I say, I believe Bitcoin will go down to 25. I'm waiting for a good buying opportunity myself. Hopefully, uh, if you're into crypto, I'm wrong and you will see good gains. But we will see in a week. Uh, Dogecoin is the other coin that we follow. And last week I said uh, I expected um, Dogecoin to end at 35 uh, cents. I was more positive to Dogecoin than uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Dogecoin ended Friday at 37. Right now it's about 35, I think. But uh, we were looking at Friday prices. So a little bit off uh, on the price, but the direction was good. And if we look at uh, the Dogecoin chart, well, there is really not uh, much uh, joy in that chart either. I would say that the volume follow the, the, the crypto somewhat okay, which is usually a good sign. And I say to you that if it follows, you can... It's easier to predict development. Good support at 35 uh, cents. If it breaks down, it should fall very fast to 30, which is another support level, also the bottom of the trend. Relative strength index is 54, neither or both. Uh, so it's uh, okay. Buy signal from short term moving average, but sell signal from the long term moving average. And the general trend looking at extreme short picture, if you look on the uh, five, six weeks, it's still falling. It needs to break proper upwards above the 40s and the 50s before it can reestablish itself properly within that good trend. Right now it's testing uh, the bottom and usually that either goes good or bad. We have to make a decision about what will happen this week. And I think that uh, Bitcoin will uh, have a hard week. Bitcoin being the big whale among the cryptos. I think that will put a slight toll on Dogecoin as well. And if um, we go back to March, you have to remember that uh, Dogecoin was traded around 5 cents. So it's still up 7 times from uh, March. So there is still lots and lots of profit held in Dogecoin. I believe uh, Dogecoin will uh, struggle. I don't think uh, that the support at 35 will hold. I think it will continue downwards and then we'll see more uh, profit securing. That should push uh, Dogecoin below the 30 cent level. My target will be 27 for this week. And again, we are at uh, this level, which I find very interesting, especially if it managed to go down to somewhere around 25, 27. I believe that will be a good opportunity. So all in all, uh, not too optimistic uh, about uh, crypto. You can follow the crypto at our page. Uh, last time uh, the issue, the signal for Dogecoins, for instance, was June 3rd. And since then, uh, Dogecoin is down 7%. Bitcoin, uh, we gave you a sell signal uh, 10th of May. And since then, uh, Bitcoin is down 36%. So since 10th of May, our systems, our algorithms have been saying sell. And uh, it's still a sell. And it's quite heavy sell, actually. We will see if uh, algorithms and uh, I am correct or if the crypto will move upwards during the week. That brings us to the very, very last part of this uh, podcast and it's my portfolio and it was a good week nice to see that uh, my high risk portfolio uh, were doing good and as I told you last week if the week is if the stock markets are good that portfolio usually do quite good if it's bad it does equally bad simply because I'm too uh, highly exposured into high risk stocks Diffusion Pharmaceuticals uh, was moving up and down during the week, uh, did a minor gain overall uh, for the week. It's currently trading at 72 cents. Uh, and actually, I uh, put a little bit more into Diffusion Pharmaceuticals. If you are new and been following Diffusion Pharmaceuticals for a long time, making very good money in Diffusion, uh, they have a product which I believe in, uh, even though I have to admit that we are getting to the very end uh, of that Diffusion Pharmaceuticals uh, is working with oxygen transport in the blood. And right now they have huge problems in India, uh, cannot get enough oxygen at the hospitals. 
So I, I've really been waiting for some positive news for the trials that could push this stock really to the high uh, five dollars. Hasn't happened so far. We are far, far off uh, that target. But I remain positive to the fusion pharmaceuticals. Last time it was cut, I took uh, cut by stop loss. I took uh, a profit because I've been in this stock for uh, a long, long time. Been accumulating lots of shares. But uh, I uh, last week I put a little bit of the profit which I have made back into the stocks have actually increased uh, my stake in the fusion because to me it looks like it should move uh, upwards again. NEO ended at uh, 41.94 last week, so good week, good 10% uh, gain uh, for NEO last uh, week. It's still uh, under uh, the target since uh, Christmas, so overall it's not performed uh, too good. But it's finally moving in the right direction and the charts are starting to look a lot better. Petrogeo Service, this Norwegian oil company, a seismic company, uh, is doing very good. Also, that stock was up 10% uh, uh, over the week and is just pushing offers. Currently trading at 5.91 Norwegian kroner. Uh, and uh, that's uh, good uh, for me because I am very very well profited on the stock so far but i think that we will see this stock way up in the eight nine tens uh, remains to see uh, arbutus did not have a particular good week but we also managed some percentage in arbutus ending the week at 294. ur energy uh, yet another good week ending the week at uh, 153 and uh, right now it's up 56% since we put it into the portfolio. So it's uh, it's been a good trade so far, but I don't think we are over last week. I said that I'm looking for a possible exit point, but it doesn't move too fast. And as long as it doesn't go into some sort of rally or do uh, um, very fast movements, I am very happy. I like that slow, just keep moving in the right direction in slow pace. Fits me much better than these rapid rallies, which you have to pay attention, otherwise you're just uh, enjoying a short ride up, just to go back to the same level. Your energy had that uh, rally a few times before, so uh, if it happens, I will just sell. But as long as I just keep climbing, I am the most happy guy. Well, it's the energy up and down this uh, pink stock. Uh, which I say is kind of lottery ticket. Nothing majorly happened this week, moved hardly anything. Uh, currently trading at 7.5 cents. New is uh, Ukugen. I brought Ukugen back into the portfolio. So that is new from this week. Uh, I believe that we will see Ukugen uh, start to move again. Uh, last time I was in, I took a uh, little loss just to see that it moved straight up again so after checking the Ukugen chart i think that we might see some movements again but uh, let me remind you the risk is very high tencent music did not have the best week it was traded just below uh, what it was the last week ending at 1541 sumo however was pushing upwards had a good week was all up, uh, above one dollar didn't manage and then fell back and that's typical reaction for zoom I think that we'll see some more action during this week, hopefully in the right direction that it will not push downwards to the low 80s. That may very well happen, uh, but I believe that we will see uh, gains. Since I brought Zoom in at 88 cents, it's only up 3.4%, so it's nothing to brag about, but I think that we can do some good trades in Zoom. And uh, the target, as I said for uh, Zoom, as I said last week, I think, is uh, if we get close to 130, 150, I will be uh, on the trigger to sell. All in all, the portfolio did uh, uh, very well. Uh, my total, it was up 12.2% for the week as such. And I believe that I will see uh, a good week uh, this week. It will be exciting to see how we week. I think that the major tech stocks will struggle while some of these high risk penny stocks will catch some attention we see that from the amc the gme the blackberry they, they are on the move these mem stocks and usually they pull these 
other stocks because people are hunting for the possible next runner and that pushes these pennies upwards. We will end this podcast uh, with uh, AMC and uh, what will happen next. Well, if you look at the chart, um, it rised on extremely high volume pushing upwards. When it fell, it actually fell on lower volume. volume. And that is a good sign. Uh, makes me believe that uh, at some point it will find uh, support and it could very well bounce up again. Uh, I don't say that the uh, air is out of the balloon in AMC by any means. I've seen this before. Uh, they have that natural reaction downwards. It's, it's of course hard for those who buy uh, on the high to see uh, following hard falls. Uh, but there's a fair chance, as I see it, that we can see the stock again push uh, upwards. I know that most experts say that this will uh, collapse, that uh, tons of people will lose their money. So far, they've been very wrong about uh, GameStop, AMC, etc. And I think, still think that uh, it is not yet over. AMC uh, went out in the market, managed to get more cash. And when they do these things, they also build up the actual value of the company. Will be interesting to follow. Uh, I will just repeat uh, what I said last week. Just keep your stop loss close because it's a highly volatile stock. That's uh, it for um, this podcast. We're out of May. Uh, selling May go away. We are in June. Will this be the one thing that we've been waiting for? My guess is that we have to pay attention to the end of the week uh, because I believe um, consumer price indexes will tell so much in which kind of direction uh, that we will have. In the meantime, I hope that you will have some uh, amazing trades, that you will be able to pick the stocks that do uh, good. Final piece of advice, uh, don't always hunt for 100%. Remember that if you're able to do 2% here, 2% there, accumulation is what you really want. That's how you build up your true value, not by luck hitting one of these runners. Until next week, uh, have an amazing week. And we will speak again. Thank you for listening. Bye.